From the News Channel 5 Network, this is Open Line. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Open Line. My name is Nick Leonardo. I'm the News Channel 5 legal analyst who is filling in for Amy Rao this evening, and she will be back uh, next month. And this is a very special uh, edition of Open Line. It's the fourth Thursday of the month, and that's when uh, we have a special segment called Ask a Lawyer. That's where you, the viewer, get to call in uh, with all your legal questions. Maybe you have questions about car wrecks. Maybe you have questions about uh, estates or wills or a child custody matter or something like that. Well, we have a great guest, and he's here most of the time when we do Ask a Lawyer. And uh, maybe you've seen him on TV when it's commercials. Maybe you've seen him uh, out in the community. He does a, a lot of work out there to help others. And he's also a great lawyer. And uh, we're pleased to have him tonight. Uh, Kevin Kennedy, great Thank to see you. Thank you, Nick. Always good. We always have a great time. Nick is brilliant. Now, <laughs> you can't always see it on this TV, but believe me, he's a brilliant lawyer. We, lo we have great chemistry sure. together. We like to kick ideas backwards and forwards and share. You know, every time we come for this, why do you like to do it? Because if you know something and you can help some people, we want to help people. It's just, you know, it took a lifetime to learn all this knowledge. And my great friend, the DA, he says, Kevin, remember, knowledge is power. I said, say it again. Knowledge is power. So where do you get the knowledge? You turn on this new Channel 5 and let's uh, learn some things. Help your family. If you learn something, a co-worker needs to hear it and uh, a child needs to hear it. I don't think a parent or a grand can teach enough or preach enough to protect their family and their interests. No, I would agree. And, and folks, the numbers at the bottom of the screen there, 737 plus, 737-7587, so you can call in and ask Kevin a, a question. I know that Kevin is a general practitioner, and so you know, he can answer just about any question that you have. Well, uh, you know, when you think about, they say, well, what is a general practice? Well, in the, the practice of law now is so complicated. You need is. to know a little bit of law on a whole lot of subjects. <laughs> That's right. Uh, and they say, well, what about what is dangerous? It's kind of like, you know, we have these evidentiary questions and. Uh uh, I told one of my friends as we were coming up here, they were saying, well, and I taught my law class in the field of evidence, and uh, but I really didn't know all the answers then. But the truth is there's an exception to the exception That's to right. the exception. That's exactly and knowing right. just a little bit of law is dangerous. And uh, they said, well, that's hearsay. Well, there's only about 100 exceptions to the hearsay rule, if you didn't know that. Kind of swallows up the whole rule. Come on, it, you know? come on. Oops. And then it gets down to opinions. Well, Kevin, you know, so I guess one of the things I thought maybe we could uh, start off talking about tonight, and you guys can, can you know, call in, and, and we'll take your phone calls as well. But, you know, we've had a lot of snow and ice Wow. Lately. Yeah. One day, over 200 car wrecks right here in Nashville. And, you know, and I was watching TV, and I saw that, uh, you know, that the police department in certain areas were saying, you know, if you have an accident, you know, just exchange insur insurance information and move your vehicle out of the way. Well, if it's over $400, there's supposed to be a report. So, yes. uh, you know, what's your take on, on that kind of... Uh, to tell everyone out here, if you or a family member was involved in an uh, automobile accident, somebody could say, well, it was just ice and it wasn't anybody's fault. It was the conditions. I'm telling you again, if it were my family and they were involved, someone was negligent. And if there's damages, we've already proved those, and the person that caused it, uh, they owed a duty of care not to run over you, uh, then you have to make a claim. And, of course, the police, you know, they've got their job. They say, hey, guys, we've got too many. We can't get there. Well, then you have to kind of protect your own rights, immediately talk to a lawyer. What I like to tell people, don't ever make statements against your best interest. You know, even on that little insurance card. That's right. It said, don't get out and admit this, and you can always listen and slow to talk. Loose lips sink ships. All the way around in the law, Kevin. Yes. All the way around. Well, it looks like we've got quite a few phone calls. We can it's go ahead full. And Every line went up. Go hit them. All right. Linda is on line one. Are you there, Linda? Yes, I am. Good Hello, evening. Linda. What's your question for Kevin? Well, I've got two situations that I need uh, advice on. Okay. Um, wanna, first, I want to know if, because I was thinking that Tennessee has a um, a retaliation type law, say, for example, if you complain, like I did, I complained about what I considered was substandard medical treatment by a, a doctor. And so, uh, you know, I had just complained uh, uh, several times about uh, starting about maybe close to a year ago to the patient relations department. <clears throat> and um, I was trying to get a new doctor and everything, and, you know, nothing was really going on, going on. And so I complained about another time, two or three other times, and all of a sudden I received a letter Come on. from the director of the, the internal medicine department 
that uh, said, oh, well, you know, um, if you if you don't stop being disruptive, et cetera, um, you know, first she just kind of, she kind of walked, kind of gave me a threat. You know, you've been disruptive yes. and you, you're not going to be able to come here or whatever, whatever. So then I complained again. I sent a letter to one of the big honchos at this, this organization and his assistant sent me a letter saying, well, they, they did a review and they think the doctor, you know, did the job right. And so then uh, I got another letter just recently saying, well, not only can I not come back to that location for internal medicine, but I can't come to any location. Because I, I had made an appointment with another doctor, and but the director decided to banish me from all wow. internal medicine locations. Wow. And, you know, we hear that kind of situation often, and I'm glad you called in and shared so everyone can hear your situation. Uh, you know, when you talk about retaliatory, usually that's used when someone works at a at a company and they have a workers' comp claim, and then all of a sudden they're fired. And so then there is a specific claim in Tennessee about a retaliatory discharge where they can bring a claim because you let me go. Uh, and the truth of the matter is, uh, it, we have to make a distinction, are you an employee, are you a patient, because there's different laws and different policies and procedures that would apply to each one of those cases. Uh, one of the things, that, you know, we do have a state board that governs medical providers, and yes, you can make complaints to them, they'll have an investigation, but yes, you're not the only one that I hear that problem, well, I went and complained on this doctor, then they won't let me be, and now I can't get any doctor to see and you know we hear it quite often too because the doctor controls your meds right. and then if you say I have to have this medication well guess what you can't get the medication unless that doctor writes the prescription well now they've stopped me so what do we do and there's governmental agencies you know we've got uh, the department that regulates pharmacies we've got the uh, departments in the state that regulate them and, and you know it creates I didn't say you'd make any money off of that but it'll create a big hassle for them and it holds them with accountability. The policy, public policy, is everyone should be held to a high standard of accountability. And what's happened to you is not fair, it's not just, and it rubs people the wrong way. There'll be some avenues to get some relief. And Kevin, as you're aware, as lawyers, we got to do continuing education. Yes. And so every year when I go to do continuing education, I always see something about there's more drug laws, about yes. drug seeking and, and, and choosing positions and the like. And so as we discussed before we came on there, it's an election season, folks. Come so on. Now is the ch time yes. to go talk to your legislator about these kind of issues, and, and maybe there can be some relief there as well. Absolutely. All right, on line two, we've got Sammy. Are you there, Sammy? Yeah. Go Hi, ahead, Sam. Hey, how y'all doing? All right. right. Uh, well, I, was quite, I got stopped back in December, and I was being contained while a detective was investigating something else, and the, the officer was detaining me, but he wasn't the officer was, that had pulled me over. He was riding. Well, I was on prescription meds. I had some dental work done. I've had commercial license for 20 years. And I was charged with a first fence DUI. Whoa. Now, you're the main man that needs a lawyer in the worst kind of way. Well, I'm on disability now. I can't afford a lawyer. Well, and you know, in that situation, you should file an affidavit with the court and ask that they appoint a lawyer. If you're charged um, in the state of Tennessee in the United States of America, you have a constitutional right. If you can't afford a lawyer, one will be appointed to you. But again, in his situation, you and I can be pulled over going home tonight. That's right. The officer can say, hey, can I search your car? You, you know, I don't really want them to search my car. I have a right against illegal searches and seizure, and I don't see the need. Loose lips sink ships. I've said that before. Learn that. And again, you know, if you say, well, I'm on this, I'm on that, they take your own words and use That's against right. you and say, sir, will you turn around? We're going to handcuff you. We're going to take you down. I'll reach Hello, come in. Try not to say anything. Try not to put anything in, in a jam. Because many times you think you can talk your way out of it, Nick. So you want to just keep talking and talking. And many times they have a tape recorder right sure. here. And they are taping you. They'll take you to the front of the car. And there's a video camera videoing you. And so uh, in that situation, you know, they still have to prove your guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. And so they have a hard time. They say 90% of the people are in the penitentiary because they talked. 
That's right. That's exactly right. That's good advice. Folks, if you're staying on the line, if you're on the line, stay there. We'll be right back to finish taking your phone calls. And if you want to call in, we have a couple open, 737-plus, 737-7587. We'll be right back.